So finally, cancel culture comes for Crobcat. Okay, not really. He just gave a controversial opinion for quite possibly the first time in his channel's history. As you know, I'm no stranger to controversy, so I figured I might as well throw my two cents in. Now, on principle, I'm going to defend any real opinion I see on the internet, whether or not I agree with it, because I respect the courage just to disagree with whatever the current NPC hive mind believes in. Now, I don't necessarily agree with certain points in this video, and the common critique that he's cherry-picking the worst elements of the remake is a fair criticism to make, honestly, and you have to remember, I actually gave the remake a positive review. Yes, I like the original better for various reasons, but I still think it's a good game, and I wouldn't necessarily call it soulless. Maybe slight elements of it are soulless. And for those of you who don't know, Soul vs. Soulless is a 4chan meme. So obviously he's catering to a certain demographic with his content. And look, I realize you could say the same thing about my channel, but the reality is my viewership reflects my content. Crobcats does not reflect 4chan in any way. He has over a million subs, a lot of his videos get in the multiple millions of views. He's clearly much more mainstream even if he doesn't have a physical presence as a personality on YouTube. I guess the point of what I'm saying here is Crobcat essentially did exactly what I've done multiple times in the past, which is tackle something that is beloved either from recency bias or just because it's legitimately a great game that caters to a certain audience and criticize that thing with very little consideration to its mass popularity and the inevitable backlash. And that's because I don't care about the backlash anymore. I've dealt with it for three years at this point, and so I can certainly respect that approach. Now, one thing I don't agree with is that he passive-aggressively changed the title to Resident Evil 4 Remake is a Masterpiece, and many people clearly didn't get the joke, but it definitely looks like you're backpedaling, and he also rewrote the description, and in the original said that the purpose of the video was for you to come to your own conclusion while telling you it was soul versus soulless. So to some people, it looks like he's giving in to criticism, and to other people, it looks like he couldn't handle any criticism. Not really a good look either way. That being said, I still want to analyze certain parts of this video, give it a fair critique. Obviously, it's 37 minutes long, so I'm not going to just react to clips. We'll just briefly go over some of the points. And I do want to cover one specific YouTuber's reaction to this, which I thought was pretty pathetic. So without further ado, here's Resident Evil 4 Soul vs. Soulless comparison by Crobcat. Now, believe it or not, I actually already have a problem with the first clip he used, and I think this is an issue with his video style in general. If something isn't immediately apparent in how bad it is, then the audience is probably going to be confused what you're actually critiquing. When he shows off the first encounter with the Ganado, he compares the cutscene from the original game and the very short encounter afterward to just the Plagas Ganado that comes down the stairs in the remake. This is not a fair comparison because the majority of what you're showing from the original game is a cutscene that is in the remake and you didn't show it. You could have just spliced the two together, but I think what he was trying to critique here is that the very first Ganada you shoot shows you how the gameplay mechanics work. An enemy will be stunned no matter where you shoot them. You can follow up attack, you know, that sort of thing. Whereas in the remake, the Ganado is killed in the cutscene and the Plagas takes over him off screen. And so the first enemy you shoot is bullet resistant, which I agree is a legitimate criticism of the remake. It's one I had. But when there's no narration explaining what you're trying to critique, especially this is the very first clip in the video, people are already going to have a problem with it. Now I think the next series of clips where he's showing side by sides of various shots from the game, just visual comparisons of lighting and some of the background ambiance. I'm actually a little 50-50 on it myself, but at least you can come to your own conclusion, ignoring of course the title trying to tell you what to think obviously, but he's allowed to have his opinion. I give my opinion of the game in the title all the time and people try and call it clickbait. Now we get to the part of the video where our mystery YouTuber had a bitch fit on Twitter. G-Man Lives. 
He makes the claim that Crobcat boosted the audio for the original game to make the ambient sounds louder. As someone who played the original just a few weeks ago, this is complete bullshit. And no, showing audio waveforms between the two clips does not prove that he dropped the audio levels for the remake footage. And according to Crobcat himself, he says he actually audio boosted the remake by multiple decibels. Whereas G-Man Lives provides a clip that we're supposed to believe on his word is unaltered. So if the ambient sound in the original is louder and much more noticeable like Crobcat is claiming, you could easily compare how much louder a gunshot is in the original versus the remake compared to the ambient sound. If you just play the same exact comparison, we can't tell what's been decibel boosted or suppressed. So this is literally just hearsay, you're supposed to trust whatever YouTuber you like more I guess. I know in my personal anecdotal experience, the ambient sound is definitely more noticeable in the original. Either way, it's pretty pathetic out of all the points in this video, you want to just claim he lied about audio levels. So this is just embarrassing seething. He's like in his late 30s or some shit, talking like a zoomer on Twitter. God damn, dude. This is some serious secondhand cringe I'm getting from reading these tweets. Now to get back to the actual video, there is a slight problem I have with these comparisons, although I agree with the ambient sound issue. I think the visual downgrades or upgrades are a bit of a case by case basis. The only consistently bad thing about the remake is just something bad about modern games in general, which is lighting and visual clarity. The filter room or the water room or the Ashley turns some cranks room, whatever you want to call it, definitely looks better in the original just because the lighting lets you see everything clearly. The colors aren't muted. It is pleasing to the eye. The new one is trying too hard to have like this spooky-ish atmosphere when the game isn't scary in the least. That said, it's not all downgrades. I actually like the scaffolding area outside of the church in the village. And honestly, it has more visual clarity than the original does just because you didn't have to hide low poly backgrounds and sky boxes. So the new one can look pretty detailed without that hardware limitation, so it looks quite good. So moving on to the next portion. Since this video is sort of told in chronological order throughout the game, I'm going to sort of just try and bundle all of the various cutscene comparisons here. Let me just say, I definitely prefer the original's cutscenes, no doubt. This is something that is going to confuse normies the most, because they're probably just looking for graphics comparisons, and not the actual cinematography, or the soundtrack, or just the certain framing of things. I'm not exactly a film buff, but I can definitely recognize when more effort is put into each shot. And the original just looks better in a lot of cases. I think the El Gigante cutscene is one of the best examples where the build-up to him showing up in the original was so fucking cool, he really seemed dangerous, like a threat. He kills a shit ton of Ganados, the screen zooms in on his uppercut as he just barely misses Leon. It feels really intense, whereas in the new one, there's just a red cultist and Gigante just kind of shows up unceremoniously. And that's certainly not the only unceremonious appearance in this game, even worse is the Novistadors who don't even get any proper introduction. In the original they didn't get a cutscene either, but the entire sewer section of the castle was their intro appearance, and Salazar builds them up talking about his pets in the sewer. And so even though the game's not really scary, it is a bit of an intense moment because the things are invisible and you don't know that going in. In the remake, they're just there, out of nowhere, they just show up. And then for the actual script, the dialogue writing, you already know I'm 100% on Crobcat's side. The new one is so much more boring, with a few exceptions. I think Krauser was handled pretty well. 
but the majority of the iconic lines from the game were cut, or in a couple places were moved so that you could very easily ignore them in the case of Salazar and Leon's final confrontation, bringing up the whole, oh, you're just an extra in my script. You could very easily ignore that because it's part of the gameplay. You can tune out the dialogue. When it's a radio conversation, you kind of have to focus on it. And again, you might argue it's better to put it in gameplay. In most cases, I would absolutely agree. But Resident Evil 4's cutscenes are very entertaining. That's the point. The remakes can be sometimes. There's a few action movie-esque ones I really enjoy. But they're so much more boring otherwise and sanitized, you know? There's no more quote-unquote derogatory dialogue toward women. And I really put that in quotes because it's basically fucking nothing, guys. Come on. How sensitive are you? Though I gotta say, despite most of the cutscenes being a downgrade, another part of the video I absolutely disagree with is this comparison between the Krauser QuickTime event fight, if you can call it that, and the remake where it's an actual boss battle that uses the knife mechanics to great effect. If the goal of this video is to call the remake soulless, why the hell would you show these two scenes together? This is one area where the remake is pretty much objectively better than the original. Who the hell would prefer a quick time event to a boss battle? So again, this is the type of stuff that's going to piss people off, and I think he's partially doing this just to cover the entire game's cutscenes, but usually his videos are pretty concise. A lot of Crobcat videos are under 10 minutes. This one's 37 minutes, so it just looks like you're comparing most of the cutscenes when a lot of them don't really apply to the downgrade angle that he's trying to portray here. Another section I agree with is the death animations. A lot of the new ones have very little gore or are lacking impact in some way. The originals were very over the top, whether it's Leon getting his head chopped off or his face melted off by acid, getting impaled on a giant stalagmite if you fuck up the quick time event. That stuff is super entertaining. In the new one, a lot of stuff just feels more muted. I'd say the chainsaw execution is still pretty good. But a lot of the other ones are lacking impact. And honestly, you could say that about a lot of the animations in general. I forgot to bring up that the suplex doesn't explode people's heads anymore in my remake review, but that was something that annoyed me. And so while I could probably go through this entire video and probably name a lot of specific moments where clearly the original did do it better, or maybe Crobe Cat's cherry picking certain things, honestly, what I got from this video is just that Sound design was something that the original game did extremely well that I didn't even bring up in my video. Sometimes you don't even notice when something is done well. The sign of a true masterpiece is that it really just does everything amazingly, and yet people still try to claim that the original wasn't that good for whatever stupid reason. The original game is something that you felt Capcom put their all into it. They knew it was a completely different style of gameplay, so it was going to put off a lot of people. So an extreme amount of love and care was put into every single element. Now, did it all blend together cohesively? Arguably not. I mean, you have things like the laser room that is straight up just a reference to the shitty Resident Evil movies. And the bulldozer sequence makes no fucking sense at all. And I can name any number of things, really, the lava room, blah, blah, blah. But I like a lot of that stuff. I do. I don't really care if it fits because Resident Evil 4 is just supposed to be a fun B-movie action schlock experience. If you turned any goofy 80s or 90s action movie into a video game, Resident Evil 4 is what it would look like. And the remake tones down a lot of the things that made the original good. But, and there's a huge fucking but, and this is a big part of why there's so much backlash to this Crobe Cat video. Gameplay is king. Crobe Cat doesn't talk about gameplay unless it directly affects certain background elements, like physics objects, right? A lot of modern games remove physics interactivity with objects in the background, especially as a gameplay element. They almost never have any relevance to gameplay, and instead use all this powerful hardware to just make games photorealistic, which is much less fun. An example I've seen a few times is that you can actually shoot and break through wooden doors in the original Resident Evil 4, and this actually is a gameplay mechanic, not one I use much. But if you shotgun blast a door off, that can help sometimes. 
in the remake, you can't destroy doors, so that does hurt the gameplay a little bit, a tiny bit. If I had seen more comparisons like that in this video, it would be a better video, because as it stands, it feels mostly like an opinion piece, and yes, I would say all game reviews are opinion pieces, but I mean, there was a certain almost objective quality to Crobcat's older videos. They were used to display how a lot of modern games are objectively inferior to previous entries in the series, and this is kind of why I wish he had covered the Dead Space remake. Not because I think it's bad, I actually think the Dead Space remake's pretty good too, despite the woke elements they added that every shill reviewer pretends doesn't exist for some reason. Are they on EA's payroll at this point? But I'd say when you get into the finer details, the Dead Space remake actually fucked up a lot of horror elements. I briefly touched on them at the end of my Last of Us Episode 3 review, but I think there's a lot of potential to dig in there and find all of the downgrades, of which there were quite a few. Whereas with the Resident Evil 4 remake, it's still a more or less complete reimagining, so a lot of these criticisms by showing the side-by-side -side clips don't apply so much because so much of the game is completely different. Yes, it is a remake, but it is a reimagining remake, so some of these side-by-side -side comparisons don't even work because the level design of said rooms, areas, whatever, are completely different. And the gameplay is significantly different too, despite what some people might tell you. So I'm not saying his style of critique is invalid, but he should have taken a slightly different approach here. I don't know how I would do it, personally because I obviously rely on narration for the vast majority of my critique in my videos. I've been trying to include more clips, but sometimes I get lazy. With Crobcat, his videos are dependent entirely on clips and occasionally on developer commentary if it's relevant to the video. So I honestly think this type of comparison needed a bit more care taken to at least ensure the message you're trying to get across is apparent to the audience. If the goal of this video was to show that the original had better sound design, better animations, better lighting and visual clarity, much more entertaining cutscenes that have better cinematography, I think he did an okay job, but there's way too many clips here where it's not exactly apparent what the critique is, especially not to the mainstream audience that his size of channel commands. And it also doesn't really tackle on any level the main reason why people like the remake, which is the gameplay, and that's what I acknowledged in my review. Even though I like the gameplay of the original better, the new one is much more skill-based, and the knife mechanic is really cool. And honestly, the boss fights are better too, and that counts for a lot. Video games are an interactive experience, so I think we're starting to reach the limitations of Crobcat's style of critique here. Now again, I still kind of enjoyed the video as someone who likes the original more. I don't think it's a bad video, there's a reason why I titled this In Defense of Crobcat, but it certainly could be a better video. I don't know if he'll ever see this, if he does, I hope you take some of these criticisms to heart, and try not to listen to people like G-Man Lives, who is an obvious shill and a proud shill he displays on his Twitter, which would be funny if it wasn't true. We unfortunately now live in an era of toxic positivity, which is essentially just a way for corporations to get you to buy their products. If they make a 7 out of 10 game, we have to all pretend it's a masterpiece for the rest of time until we inevitably forget about it in a month, and then you buy the next 7 out of 10 that everyone has to call a masterpiece. When you begin to understand that it is all a cycle of shilling, above average products, not bad products, objectively bad products get shit on. Just look at that Velma show, it got shit on by basically every personality on the internet, which if you ask me is fucking boring, which is exactly why I didn't make a video on it. No, what's actually interesting is critiquing good games. And unfortunately, Crobcat figured out firsthand, you're not allowed to critique good games. We have to pretend that they're all amazing and flawless. But also, that wasn't your best work by any stretch, dude. So yeah, still love the channel, we'll still watch any video that you make, because they are genuinely interesting in a unique style of content that you won't really see anywhere else on YouTube, because everything on YouTube is about the parasocial relationship now, so a channel with no commentary that is actually informative and interesting is extremely rare. 
So yeah, this was a little bit of a different style of content this week because I'm working on a much bigger video. The video is really just me celebrating what I enjoy about video games since I talk about negativity so much because modern games really are just disappointing. So I hope you end up enjoying it. It's not going to be here for at least another week, probably closer to two because I'm actually going on a little bit of a vacation soon. So there's not going to be any streams either. Maybe I'll make a community post if you don't end up seeing this part of this video. Either way, that's about it. See you next time, guys.